Scientists have been using the Large Hadron Collider in Europe to smash particles together for a while now, unveiling discoveries about the very nature of our universe. In the last few years, though, they had a wall, stymied by the limits of technology, funding, industry, and ambition. But no longer. Dubbed the Future Circular Collider, this next-generation particle accelerator promises to be a behemoth that will eclipse everything that came before it. If executed correctly, it could unravel the secrets behind the very building blocks of our existence. Nevertheless, the project is already entangled in controversy, funding disputes, and uncertainty about its future, and they haven't even started building it yet. It stands to become one of the greatest scientific achievements of all time, if it ever gets built. So, you might be wondering, why does humanity need a new collider? I thought we already got one. And that's a fair question. And while we do have an existing collider, there are strong reasons to believe that it's now already become a bit outdated. For nearly two decades, the Large Hadron Collider, the world's largest and most powerful collider, has been smashing particles together in the name of science. Remember when the newspapers warned that scientists had built something capable of creating a black hole that could kill us all? Yes, that was the LHC. The machine replaced an earlier electron-positron collider that once occupied the same tunnel in Geneva, Switzerland. And throughout its two decades of operation, it has been expertly managed by the European Organization for Nuclear Research, also known as CERN. In the early 2010s, the Large Hadron Collider played a key role in discovering the Higgs boson particle, the linchpin of what we now call the standard model of the universe in quantum physics. This model is an elegant way of explaining why the fundamental particles of the universe exist in their present forms, function the way they do, and interact with one another. The discovery of the long-theorized Higgs boson provided the first direct evidence supporting the standard model and offered valuable insights into the behavior of the universe's smallest components. The the collider achieved this by accelerating particles in a circular path at extremely high speeds before smashing them into each other and measuring the resulting decay particles. That's why it's called a collider. It collides things. But the Large Hadron Collider hasn't been able to uncover those much-anticipated breakthroughs that could further validate the standard model. Despite being our best explanation for various universal phenomena, the model has loads of gaps. We still can't shed light on some of physics's greatest mysteries, like the nature of dark matter and dark energy, why there is more matter than antimatter in the universe, where gravity comes from, or even what other particles might exist to help us understand our place in the cosmos. So, in 2019, CERN stepped forward with a proposal to change that. Just before we continue, have you ever thought about a rebuild civilization from scratch? No? <laughs> well, maybe you should. What's the first thing you'd reinvent? The wheel? Electricity? The printing press? <laughs> Show those off to people. You'd be like, look at this. I made a wheel. Be like, what is the How? It's so fast! Well, that's where the book, The Ultimate Guide to Rebuilding Civilization, comes in. Check this out. This thing. Ugh is an absolute beast. This arrived by the FedEx man and the people who, who, who made this, who sponsored this, they were like, we're gonna send you the book. And I'm like, okay, cool, 400 pages. I was expecting like a novel sized thing. Nope. <laughs> This thing is massive. And look, this isn't your typical history book. I really feel like if I was going to make a book, like a book for my channels or whatever, this is what I'd make. It's just dope. You open it to any page. Oh, this is what I'd like. How to make wine. Is that, forget the wheel, forget electricity and the printing press. That's what I want. A fine beverage that warms the body and heals the soul, although every drop of wine is made from fermented grape juice. Not just any grape is worthy of becoming a wine, you goddamn right. <laughs> so not only that, you'll be making good wine. Every I'll open this at a random page. It will have a beautiful illustration. I'll open it at another random page. It will have a beautiful illustration. It's full of cool information and beautiful illustrations. 400 pages of it. I look forward to taking this home and showing it to my kids, even though they won't understand it. <laughs> but they'll like looking at the pictures. Oh, uh, look, this isn't your typical history book. It's 400 pages. It's like a beautifully illustrated... Oh, look at fridge! How to make a fridge! Does it... It's really cool. It's beautifully illustrated. I'm way off the talking points. And a heat pump? You're making an energy efficient fridge. Wait, are all fridges run off heat pumps? I'm not, I've had this sitting by my desk for like the last couple of weeks and I'll just pick it up and I'll just open it to a random page. In fact, I've looked at this mining page before and you just, it, there's always something interesting. It's a mix between engineering blueprints and medieval art, except way cooler. This was a Kickstarter project originally, raised $3.2 million. 
And uh, it did that because it's awesome. Then it became a bestseller, so that's cool. High quality handmade illustrations, clever paper engineering. This is a book that is just a bit special. So use the link in the description below. Use my code MEGAPROJECT10 for a discount. Go grab the book, you won't regret it. You'll, you just have this sitting by your desk for ages and you'll just enjoy diving into it. I promise it's great. And now back to today's video. Instead of retrofitting an old collider like Hadron, they envisioned an entirely new machine, a project so ambitious that if built, it would rank among the largest scientific instruments ever created. It's called the Future Circular Collider. Since the old Hadron can't smash particles with enough intensity, CERN's solution was to scale up the technology to do it bigger and better. And when it comes to smashing particles, this machine would give the Hulk a run for his money. So, time for a little comparison then. The Large Hadron Collider knocks particles together at 14 tera electron volts, a unit of energy roughly equivalent to 1.6 joules, which means a 14 followed by 12 zeros of energy. In contrast, the Future Circular Collider would be capable of ramming particles into each other at 100 tera electron volts. This means it could smash particles together with roughly seven times more force than the LHC, mainly by using superconducting magnets to steer and focus beams of particles traveling just under the speed of light. Which is, funnily enough, about as long as it takes your mum to text me back. The Future Circular... <laughs> Ollie, man. <laughs> Random joke slipped in, I love it. The Future Circular Collider will offer seven times the smashing power because its design is three times larger than the LHC. While the relatively puny Large Hadron Collider spans roughly 27 kilometers in circumference, the Future Circular Collider will stretch an impressive 91 kilometers all the way around. It will be constructed 200 meters underground, completely encircling Geneva and its surrounding area, with a small portion even passing beneath Lake Geneva. To accommodate this massive structure, nearly 16.5 million tons of material will need to be excavated, a figure that might seem enormous, but is actually about eight times less than the amount removed for the first phase of HS2. And don't we all just love British infrastructure? Anyway, CERN estimates that it will take five years to complete all the necessary excavation before the collider can be built in stages. Initially, it will operate on what's known as a Higgs factory, a temporary mode of operation while the technologies needed to realize its full potential are still under development. During this interim phase, the collider will generate and study large numbers of Higgs bosons in the hope that this will enhance our understanding of their role in the universe and, more broadly, improve our grasp of the standard model. The Higgs factory stage may also reveal deviations from standard model predictions, which could provide clues about the existence of new particles and suggests ways to find them. By 2070, the Collider is expected to be fully operational, potentially opening up new insights into the mysteries of the universe. Of course, a super mega collider requiring 100 quadrillion electron volts of energy can't simply be powered by solar panels, and it isn't cheap. So the questions remain, how will it be powered? And perhaps most importantly, what will this colossal collider cost? Surprisingly, the power requirements aren't as intensive as one might assume. You would expect that something seemingly built only by Iron Man would need a massive amount of energy. However, according to CERN, the future circular collider is designed to use an energy level similar to that of the existing LHC. The anticipated power consumption is expected to vary between 1 and 1.8 terawatt hours per year, while it will operate on a French energy grid that produces over 500 terawatt hours annually. That's still an insane amount of electricity. All in all, though, it should be manageable. But the cost is where the new collider might hit a wall. CERN documents suggest that the first phase alone could cost up to $17 billion. Meanwhile, estimates from accelerated physicist Vladimir Schlitzlev at Northern Illinois University and his team indicate that the full project will likely require a minimum of around $30 billion and, in all likelihood, a whole lot more. In comparison, CERN's annual budget is a relatively modest $1.4 billion. <laughs> Super affordable. Although there will be many years to complete the project, allowing the expense to be spread over time, it will still represent a monumental financial challenge for the organization. Even the feasibility study alone is estimated to cost over $125 million. It's anticipated to begin operations sometime in the 2040s. In fact, even if CERN dedicated its entire annual budget solely to the future collider, it still might fall short of what's needed until the late 2040s. This means extra funding will likely have to come from somewhere in order to keep all the projects running. 
However, that prospect is likely to upset many countries as they'll be expected to cough up the additional money, especially when budgets are already tight, global issues are expensive to address, and defense spending is on the rise. They might be tempted to secure more funds by promising the Pentagon they can take the fight to Beijing, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Now, a $30 billion a year collider, not exactly an impulse buy. So what do the real users, the scientists, think about it? In truth, opinions are mixed, but let's begin with the positives. The project has the backing of many physicists at CERN and is led by CERN's Director General, Fabiola Gianotti. It's also supported by the incoming Director General, Mark Thompson, who is set to replace Gianotti in early 2026. Regarding the future circular collider, Gianotti stated the following. If approved, the FCC would become the most powerful instrument ever built to study the laws of nature at the most fundamental level. Gianotti firmly believes that exploring the energy frontier will deepen humanity understanding of physics on the smallest scales, which are intimately connected to the physics governing the universe on the larger scales. Essentially, the FCC will allow us to learn more about the building blocks of the universe and in doing so, reveal greater insights into the universe itself. If built, it would undoubtedly drive humanity forward by necessitating technological innovations to fully realize its potential. We're talking about advances in cryogenics, superconducting magnets, vacuum technologies, and more. Each of these innovations could have a massively beneficial impact on society at large. Cryogenics might be vital to our understanding of healthcare and other sciences in the future. Superconducting magnets could revolutionize travel and weaponry, and breakthroughs in vacuum technology could lead to more efficient pumping systems or even support space colonization. The essential point is that the future circular collider wouldn't be constructed for its own sake, but for the myriad benefits that it could offer along the way. But not everyone's convinced. Many roadblocks and dissenting opinions surround one of the biggest and most expensive scientific machines ever proposed, primarily due to a problematic mix of absolutely insane costs and politics. Because CERN is an international organization made up of many member countries, each nation must be satisfied with how its money is spent. This requirement inevitably leads to disagreements. When the Large Hadron Collider was first proposed, Germany threatened to leave CERN entirely unless its demands for reduced contributions were met. Ultimately, although the discovery of the Higgs boson made Germany's stance seem somewhat misguided, there is no guarantee that future investments will result in similarly groundbreaking advancements. The controversy over the cost of the collider has already reached unprecedented levels. Germany has once again stated that it will not increase its budgetary contributions in response to CERN's request for an additional 12% from all member countries to finance the project. Currently, Germany contributes nearly $300 million annually to CERN, which accounts for over 20% of the organization's total budget. It simply cannot or will not afford to contribute more when other nations fail to shoulder their share. Even though CERN contributions are allocated based on GDP, the burden feels heavier when you're the one with the bill. As it stands, there is still no fully detailed cost plan to fund the project. Even if every member and associate nation were to increase their contributions, the funds would still fall short. The worst case scenario would involve constructing a significant portion of the collider only for the money to run dry and leave the project incomplete. All that investment, all that effort, resulting in Switzerland being marked by a 200 meter deep, 91 kilometer long circular scar on the landscape. That would be a bit of a disaster. A similar fate met the US superconducting superconductor in the 1990s, a project that Congress canceled in 1993 after two billion dollars had already been spent. Essentially, if they're going to build it, they have to fully commit. And that creates a pressing concern about CERN putting all of its eggs in one basket. With the Collider consuming an enormous portion of resources, some researchers worry that other important areas of science might be neglected or not explored to their fullest potential. After all, the investment isn't solely about money, it's about time as well. The Collider will only reach its full operational capacity and begin smashing new particles together by 2070. If this Collider becomes CERN's paramount priority, one must ask what will happen to other projects over the next half century. Helena Abramovitz, a well-known skeptic of the project and a particle physicist at Tel Aviv University, expressed her concerns. She stated, quoting here, The issue is whether the community is willing to sacrifice the next 50 years to get a toy which may or may not be the way for fixing the standard model. She doesn't want to force future generations, the grandkids of researchers, to toil on a project that may not deliver the results some have claimed it would. 
Moreover, CERN's leadership appears to be railroading the project, creating the impression that the organization, which was built by and for scientists, isn't very interested in the dissenting opinions of its own community regarding the new collider. What's more, the discovery of the Higgs boson represented the high watermark for the Large Hadron Collider, yet it hasn't brought forth any new breakthroughs since its discovery in the early 2010s. Theoreticians have yet to show conclusively that smashing protons together at even higher energies will necessarily uncover new scientifically significant phenomena. Of course, similar doubts were likely expressed when the Large Hadron Collider replaced its predecessor, and indeed, it delivered on its promises. Nevertheless, the key point remains. There's no guarantee, and funding a project costing at least $30 billion on a wing and a prayer isn't going to be seen as a universally responsible investment. Now, there are two factions emerging at CERN over the issue, and the growing divide is increasing the pressure on CERN's leadership. Several individuals who have seen the original strategy documents assert that these materials differ from the course the current leadership appears determined to follow. The original document was reportedly crafted with care to avoid establishing a two-stage collider as the top priority, a project that would take decades to become operational. And yet, despite these intentions, Sam seems to be moving precisely in that direction, which calls the entire approach into question. Cynics both inside and outside the scientific community have raised a valid point about CERN and the Collider. Scientists, like everyone else, hold biases, one of which is naturally geared toward their own career advancement and the industry's growth. The future circular collider promises job security for generations of scientists in the region, providing a compelling reason to keep the funding flowing. Unlike a linear collider that can handle only one experiment at a time, the future circular collider can conduct four simultaneous experiments. This capability necessitates more staff and researchers to operate and monitor the machine, as well as to analyze the additional data it generates. Moreover, some have confessed to feeling the pressure to support the new collider. After all, an organization that is constantly embroiled in disputes over its most significant potential project hardly conveys the image of a stable funding proposal. Whether we like it or not, vested interests often come to be seen as more important than the pure scientific breakthroughs the new Collider might yield. Ultimately, if this project is built, it will provide us with significant benefits along the way. Yet the key question remains, with a price tag of billions of dollars, is it really worth the investment when that money could be used somewhere else? This is the decision that CERN have to confront. So what does the future hold for the future circular collider? For now, it will continue on its current course, assuming approval, though that approval not yet guaranteed. CERN has set the feasibility studies completion date for early 2025, so we could have an update at any time. Based on what we know so far, nothing in the study has raised concerns that would force the organization to dismiss the project from either a technical or scientific standpoint. Between 2027 and 2028, CERN's council, comprising delegates from all 24 member states, will decide whether to move forward. Ultimately, the fate of the future circular collider rests in their hands. Thank you for watching.